Hey all, welcome back to the channel. I have some really exciting news about the project, and we're going to get into that in more detail later on in the video, but it's released. We've got a pre-release up on GitHub now, and like I said, we'll get into it a little bit later, but just wanted to start the video off with that. We are live. It's now public, and people can contribute. But moving into some of the bugs and some of the features that I've been working on over the last two weeks. So starting off, we have a big improvement with our entity tree over here. So previously, we didn't have a very good way of editing and visually seeing parent-child relationships, similar to other DCCs and engines like Unreal Engine or Unity, for example. But now we have that ability. So if we look at directional light, this is an empty arrow indicating there are no children, where or container, this is just an empty, this does have children. And you can just select that and then you can see all of its children. In this case, they're just individual meshes, OBJ meshes. Additionally, you can also click and drag them out. So you can see these are now being added to the top root level, meaning they are no longer parented. And the inverse is also true, where we can select and drag them down. Additionally, this was huge. We can now select inside the entity tree. So I clicked and then shift click somewhere else. And then if you actually click control, it'll toggle it off and on. So that's another way you can individually control your selection. It can be a lot easier than having to, oh, which one is this again? I'm not entirely sure. And then you've got to shift P. Like it's an option for sure, but this just gives us a little bit more flexibility. The next thing is a help menu, or maybe a better word would be the startup page. So when you're coming into a project fresh, you haven't really seen a lot of YouTube videos or documentation about it. It can be a bit overwhelming. So you can actually one hit show help in this case, but if you hit H, it'll pop up this help menu. And by default, actually, this is show on startup. So you shouldn't have to do anything. But this kind of acts as a landing page where people can get some information and like, hey, first steps, this is how you add a camera, et cetera, et cetera. Camera controls, hotkeys, just some basic stuff that, again, you don't have to have by default. And then there's a link to this YouTube playlist. The next thing is my class type overhaul. So <laughs> previously, I had a lot of match arms and conditionals all throughout my code. And even though we, we are multi plugin now, like we've got everything split up into the editor, gizmos, core, etc. Things were still split up in just a super inconvenient fashion. So now what I've done is I've expanded it to be significantly more modular. So can I increase the, yeah, I'll increase that there for you. So if we navigate to our core plugin here and then we find entities, we now have a new dropdown called editable and then types within that. I know it's, it's the semantics are still working on it, but in here, the folder names encompass all of the logic for that type. So if you want to know about a camera 3d within like granites type, which is the name of the editor, you can drop that down and you'll get everything that you need. So you'll get the icon here, the creation logic, the spawn logic, um, like what is a camera 3D, so the actual like struct that gets serialized, any sort of additional settings, all of that is now included within this folder, including its spawn, like its plugin itself. So you can just totally disable this. And then within our actual, oh, actually, where is it? Is it the, is it the category? Uh, no, where is it? Sorry, I'm trying to find exactly where I'm defining them. I can't remember. Okay, here it is, inside the mod. So all you have to do now to add a type, it's so much easier and I'll be extending this in further releases. We can just add in a new variant with the data and we're using polymorphism along with a crate called enum dispatch. Yeah, enum dispatch. And so it will handle all of our static match arms for us. So we have a trait now and now Whenever you create a new class, you just implement that trait and with a static polymorphism, it'll just adopt everything that it needs and you don't have to go in and create a bunch of extra match arms. In this case, the only thing that you'll need to add is 
it's to the variant and then under the uh, function to get all. So we kind of have concrete types and we have unknown types. So it uh, it's helpful for UI and different menus. Like, hey, we know what's in all, we can loop through this and we know if it's known or not. So yeah, you just add it here and that's it's pretty easy actually. If you just go through and copy and paste one of these folders, swap some names around and you'll be pretty good to go. So moving into the next thing, so I've implemented a pretty basic uh, scene system where what I mean by that is we can load multiple scenes on top of each other. So if I actually go and just despawn everything. So now we're in no scene, right? This is just totally empty. What we can do is open a new scene. So I'll just open, actually, no, that's a terrible example. Let me open starting. So I've added a new source, right? It's not totally despawning everything else where it's an additive process now. So we've got this source loaded and now we can go and open another one on top of it being showcase or whatever we want. Now, in this case, they both had main cameras in them. So we're getting some really weird camera behavior. So I'm just gonna delete one of those for the sake of it. And then we also have two directional lights, which we don't need. So it, it kind of depends on how you want to set things up. Of course, you can make this super modular or not modular at all. It's totally up to you. But the framework is now in place where we can load things on top of each other. And then you can also go and despawn from specifically loaded sources. So empty, there was nothing spawned from there. That was the accidental load. And then, hey, I'm going to despawn the starting scene. And <laughs> I despawned it. But remember, I went and deleted that camera. So I need the, the camera back with the main camera on it and yeah it ideally it would work something like hey i have my essential scene right it's got my camera my directional light probably some game managers through components and then you can add in your static geo almost like a prefab system but i uh i haven't fully thought how i'm going to be doing prefabs so it's kind of a, an in-between while I figure that out. But it is something that can be useful. So the next thing is I've created a version metadata for our file type itself. Let's see if I can navigate to that. So what's gonna be the best way to do it? Let me open up a, a new project here. This is just my testing stuff scene. Empty, yeah, one of these. So at the top here, we have a new header called metadata, and we actually have a format version. So now that I've made this public, and things are now, right, like people are gonna be using them. And if I make a breaking change, I, I just wanna make sure that uh, I'm following and I'm tracking what is compatible with what. So we now have minimum supported versions and the current version, and I can now just kinda go in and, and ensure everything is gonna work together. Another thing that has been helpful to me was the further extension of the debug menu here. So if I have something selected, I can drop down my, uh, my active entity details. And this, I can get my UUID, the source, so where it's spawned from, and then actually the entire identity data, which contains material information, anything like components, all sorts of stuff. So just further, further expanding the debug menu as well as the um, the scenes material. So that's going to show up under the available scene material or available editable materials, kind of a mouthful there. But that will just show you everything that's loaded into the world. And you can go through and debug because you can see your weak handles and all of that. So just a little bit of helpful information there. Another thing that I did was I split this plugin up. I had mentioned it previously in the video here, but I've split it into features. So uh, what, which project am I in now? I am, okay, yeah, Cargo Tommel. So what we can do is we can like now do, there's a default, default features, equals false, if I can spell, and oh, I don't have a comma there. Default features false, and then you can do features, like core so core will just give you the editor basically the serialization what the types are not no interface whatsoever 
We also have gizmos, which is just the gizmos, the transform and the rotate. We'll add more, of course, in the future. And then we have the editor. And the editor is going to be basically the default features flag. So you shouldn't ever really use that one. But that includes everything. That's core, gizmos, macros, logs, all of that stuff. So just an option now if you don't want the heavy interface with it, but you still want the serialization logic that I've done. You can now do that. And finally, <laughs> we get to talk about the fun stuff, or at least for y'all, I say that. So I have released this on GitHub and it's under a new repo. It was just getting really messy in my private repo. It was just all over the place. So I figured I'm going to start fresh, do it the right way, so to speak. And I've got that public now. So we are going to open that up here. And it is at Bevy Granite. So just Blake Darrow, Bevy Granite. You can add this to your Toml and load it that way. And you should be good to go. You can add issues. You can do pull requests, contribute however you want. I am super open to it. Please, please, please contribute. Tell me what you need and I'd love to fix it. And I've got hopefully an extensive readme here that you can go through and see some additional details and how to get started. I've got only one example in this case, but you can view that file here. I've got a breakdown of what a scene file is and just some additional information here. So please, 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 like I said, contribute, pull request, come up with issues, feature requests, anything like that. I would love to love to work on this as I've said. And my next steps in this are really just upgrading the Bevy version because this is Bevy 0.14. I started the project about nine months ago, just in my spare time, and it was just freshly released. So Bevy 0.14, and I just haven't been upgrading because I was just doing so much work on the interface and all that. I didn't want to be changing things all the time. But now that I've got my pre-release out, I feel confident with my feature set to just go ahead and upgrade. So I'll spend the next, I don't know how long, just upgrading it all the way up to probably Bevy whatever the current is, 0.16, I believe. And then from there, I'll start adding more features and any bug fixes, but that's really the next thing. So take that in mind. If you want to contribute, let's just make sure we're kind of progressing things up in the uh, upgrade path. And that's pretty much it. I am really, really excited about this. This is a long time coming. I am i can't remember how many months into it I am. Actually, if I look at my uh, my repos now. I am, let's see. <laughs> I'm at 681 commits. <laughs> so it's, uh, it's got a bad name to it. Bevy Egui. This was like nine months ago and I didn't know what I was doing. I was just playing around with it. It's, it's pretty rough. I have not been keeping things clean. So I just figured I'd go ahead and start fresh. So it should be easy to manage going forward. But again, I am really excited that this is released. I'd love all feedback, constructive, critical, whatever you need or whatever you want rather. And thank you so much for watching. This has been such a fun journey. Don't worry, I'm not done with it yet. There's so much that I wanna make with this editor, but now it's just public. Thanks for watching.